Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. This is the fourth video in the series of GTNs. Okay, now we, uh, so far we have talked about pathophysiology, then the difference between partial and complete mole. Then, uh, uh, then we talk about the management of uh, uh, both moles and uh, persistent disease. Then in the fourth installment, we are going to see GTNs, that means neoplastic problems. So, uh, whether it is a complete mole or partial mole, they are called benign neoplasms. Once they start invasing the tissues beyond the uterus, so they are now called gestational trophoplastic neoplasia. It includes invasive mole choriocarcinoma and placental site trophoblastic tumor these three things are also uh, three things are involved in these things another thing another one uh, uh, neoplasia is there but not well discussed that is epithelioid trophoblastic tumor so what in this video we are going to really talk about choriocarcinoma so let's start What are the risk factor of developing GTN? When you find a mole pregnancy, molar pregnancy, you need to find the chances of that molar pregnancy to be converted into GTN. And how you do that? You see certain risk factors. For example, age is more than 40. Let me select my pen. This is yellow one. And uh, let me select the size of 12. Okay. Now, so age is more than 40 years. Beta HCG in lakhs. That means 10 raised to 5. Uterine size is more than gestational age. That what that means? That means that yes, the mass tumor mass is there in the uterus. If even if you remove the tumor mass, that tumor is in uh, is invested in all the uterine tissue. Yes, bilateral thickal lutein cyst of more than six centimeter. Again, a marker of beta HCG and trophoblastic activity. Slow decline in beta HCG when you even. Mm, uh, suction evacuate or the hysterectomy even or maybe you have given the method exit cycle and all these things the decline of the beta hcg is not what we have expected in all these cases we are start we start doubting that it can be a gtn now particular choriocarcinoma choriocarcinoma is a malignant transformation of benign trophoblastic disease it is a metastatic transformation of benign trophoblastic disease. Uh, let's see, H mole. It uh, uh, it develops from the most commonly H mole, hydratic moles. Then it can develop from abortions even. That can it can develop even after full term pregnancy also, and on also from ectopic pregnancy. So, for development of choriocarcinoma, what we need at the, at the time we need trophoblastic cells. Most common mode of spread is hematogenous. Hematogenous spread is the most common spread. And the most common site of spread is lung. Followed by vagina, upper third, upper third vagina, pelvis, liver and last brain. Tumor marker is obvious with the beta HCG. If it is uh, metastatized to the lung, then the respiratory problems are there, chest pain, hemoptosis, pleural effusion. Canon wall metastasis on seen on the X-ray. Vaginal metastasis is seen in 30% cases. Purple hemorrhagic projection. Highly vascular bleeding. Uh, highly vascular bleed on touch. All these things. So lung metastasis is seen in one information I forget to provide you. That is, mm, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, this one. Huh? 90 sorry 80 percent cases lung metastasis is seen so lung metastasis is so 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 common now any of the any of the uh, cancer needs to be staging the stage one lesion is confined to the uterus stage two it spreads outside the uterus but within pelvis Stage 3, it leads to lungs. Stage 4, the other organs like liver, GI tract, brain, all the organs, the level 4 is the stage 4. Okay. 
now now very important system here you need to you don't need to mug up the things but still you need to understand the things that the scoring system it is very important it's also deciding factor for treatment protocols so this is who prognostic scoring system for gtn or gtds is very very important let's see each and every uh, every factor has given score 0 to 3 0 1 2 3 4 scores okay so let's start from the age if the age is less than 40 the score is given 0 if more than 40 score is given 1 8 okay mm, i should make size of the more okay yes, okay now now what is the adjacent pregnancy whether it was mole then the score is 0 abortion there is 1 term that is 2 so severity of GTD is increasing with this score so you should know at the time of uh, seeing this thing you should also know that, that the severity of choreocarcinoma or GTDs are going to increase with the increasing score so if the if the choreocarcinoma is developed from a hydrated mole then it's a low risk but if it is developed after term pregnancy then it can be a high risk okay interval of months from index pregnancy to chromo uh, chemotherapy started any pregnancy that is either that is mole abortion or term the, the interval between we started the chemotherapy and the index pregnancy in months if it is less than four what that means that means that we have started the chemotherapy within four months of having this pregnancy so it, so then it becomes the low risk case if it is more than 12 months matlab if we have seen any molar pregnancy and then after 12 months we have started the chemotherapy that 12 month time the gtd has been invaded all the tissues so again it is a very high risk pre treatment beta hcg it is uh, if the beta hcg is into uh, thousands like uh, 10 to 3 then okay it's a low risk but if it is in lakhs 10 is to 5 it is very high risk the abo group system is also very 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 associated with choriocarcinoma of female and male for female o and a or for male a and ab are the high risk cases largest tumor in centimeter if less than 3 centimeter then is good more than 6 centimeter is high risk Cytometastasis, if it is confined to lung, which is 80%, then it is still a low risk case. But if it has metastasized to brain or liver, then it is a poor prognosis patient or poor prognosis case. Number of metastasis, if more than 8, yes, very high risk. If 1 to 4, only one score is given, 1 to 4. So you see, the metastasis, if there are even 4 metastasis, then also it is not very very high risk there are four lung metastases but it's not very high risk because the prognosis is very good in choreocarcinoma prior chemotherapy if we haven't given stim chemotherapy then it's okay it's very good but if we have given more than two cycles then it's a high risk so score of six or less than six is a low risk or score more than 7 or equal to 7 is a high risk case of choriocarcinoma. Now that makes the plan of treatment. For low risk patients, single agent with methotrexate chemotherapy is given. While the high risk we have multi-drug regimen. How we give methotrexate? Same as we are giving in the persistent disease as you know this thing. Methotrexate on day 1, 3, 5, 7 and folic folinic acid that is leucovarin is given on second fourth sixth and eighth day then seven days of rest we should give and then we give another cycle okay till beta hcg is less than five and even after less than five we should give three more cycles for multi-drug regimen we have a back show regimen etoposide Methotrexate, actinomycin D, cyclophosphamide, vincristine. All this Im Imaco is the minomic for that. Now, 
another thing is radiation when is the brain metastasis we go we should go for radiation even for liver metastasis we should go for radiation so whole brain radiation is given now very important aspect prognosis if the choriocarcinoma is low risk there is 100% chance of survival so it's a not a very very big deal and even high risk there is 70% survival rate so this kind of carcinomas are not very fatal it can be controlled with chemo and radius now we need to do a follow up even after beta hcg negative we need to do follow up for low risk low risk we need to go for 12 week 12 months and for high risk we need to monitor for at least for 24 months now how we do monitoring you already know but we give bit we do beta hcg weekly till it becomes less than 5 then more if even after less than 5 we repeat it 3 week weekly why to see that that the normal value is continue or not if it is continue for for three consecutive cycles we do beta hcg monthly for 6 months and then we do 6 monthly if in this 6 month also the beta hcg remain negative we do it 6 monthly okay this is how we do the monitoring recurrence rate is also not very very good very very bad for example in non metastatic gtn it is recurrence rate is 2 to 3% and good prognosis metastatic carcinoma even we have recurrence rate of 3 to 5% so moreover 3 to 2 to 5 percent rate of recurrence is there so this is all about choriocarcinoma one another uh, tumor is placental site trophoblastic tumor uh, i have not written so let's discuss that also here let me select my pen okay so now we are going to see about placental site trophoblastic tumor pstt placental site trophoblastic tumor now so very few thing you need to remember that the marker of this thing is not beta hcg is a is a human placental lactogen okay human placental lactogen is the marker of this disease and it is locally invasive not metastatic it is locally invasive so what we do is hysterectomy in this case okay it is more common after full term pregnancy it is benign it's not malignant it's not metastasize it's confined to uterus and treatment of choice is hysterectomy the thing is it is chemo resistance so we don't give chemotherapy in these patients this will all from gtn thank you friends